welcome back to my channel. I'm Rachel, the owner and creator here at The Eclectic Cottage in Spokane, Washington. Today is Friday and for today's video, I have a furniture flip for you. I decided before I did the whole switch-o change-o from fall to Christmas, that I really wanted to get the buffet that sits in my front window done. And so I went ahead and tackled that on top of doing all of the cleaning and the rearranging here in the cottage. It was a lot of work, uh, but it's all done. And I can't wait to show it to you. It turned out beautifully. Uh, and then if you stick around till the end of the video, I also added a little shop tour. I wanted to share with you guys uh, my Christmas displays and all of the work that I did rearranging everything else in the cottage too. So stay tuned for that. Uh, I hope you enjoyed the video. And without further ado, let's get to my project for today. So this is the buffet that has been sitting in the front window in my cottage for a while now. I had sold my other one and in a panic, we needed something out of the garage that could fill the space. So we just grabbed this thing, washed it and did a little bit of repair to one of the legs on it and stuck it in place. And I have not had a chance to go in and paint it yet until now. <laughs> so in my infinite wisdom, I decided to go ahead and throw finishing a big piece like this right in the middle of my switch over at the cottage from fall decor to Christmas decor. So I started by just removing that hardware, dusting it. It was just a little bit dusty and getting it ready for paint. I decided to go light with this uh, and I am going in with DIY's crinoline color, which is this beautiful, creamy, not quite white, not really a butter color, just a beautiful, beautiful ivory. And I ended up giving this thing three good even coats of paint. Uh, and this is me just painting the body of it, just taking my time on that first coat um, and just making sure I get everywhere with that paint. The top of this thing was laminate and I have no idea who decided that that was a good idea, but I was a little bit worried about making sure the paint would adhere to the laminate. I don't know that I needed this step, but I just wanted that extra guarantee that the paint would stick really well. So I went in with some 80 grit sandpaper and just by hand gave it a really good scuff sanding and then wiped that off. Then it was on to painting. Now DIY paint is water-based, so you can always use a little mister bottle to help eliminate any pulling of the paint, um, any stickiness of the paint, especially when you're doing a big piece like this. I am not a huge fan of brush strokes, so I like to keep my mister bottle handy and it does help alleviate some of those brush strokes. My big thing is I like to go over the piece with my uh, br fine bristle brush. This is a, a synthetic bristle brush and it's very smooth and then I just paint on the paint and then go over it and just really smooth out those brush marks as much as I can. And like I said, I did put three good even coats of paint on this entire piece. I don't know that it was necessary everywhere, but there were just a few spots where it, there were a little bit of a shadow of the brown showing through. And I just really wanted to make sure I had great coverage because I knew I wanted to go ahead and do a little bit of sanding on this piece. For this step, I'm just using a simple hand sander and some 220 grit sandpaper and going over all of the flat surfaces just to knock down any crusties and help alleviate any of the brush stroke marks that might have been left by the paint. I really wanted a nice smooth finish on this piece and that is what I'm doing here. Once I was done with that, I did go back in with some 220 grit paper by hand and distressed the entire piece. I went around all of the little raised details and really highlighted some of that beautiful detail in this piece. I just love that look when you have hidden detail like this that kind of disappears into a solid paint color. It's so nice to bring it back out again. 
Then it was on to decorating. So I have this gorgeous decoupage paper. This is by Roy Cycled called Wallpaper. And I measured the fronts of the drawer panel that I needed to cover and then cut out pieces just a tad bigger than that so that I would have just a little bit of an overhang. Then I spritzed the back of my paper and then it began the decoupaging process. So for this I'm using DIY's liquid patina and I am just putting a nice even coat of the liquid patina down just on that front panel of the drawer being very careful to not get it anywhere else because I didn't want the paper to accidentally adhere any place I didn't want it to and then I just would lay it down and kind of with my fingers very gently make sure that that first strip was nice and, and adhered down and then I just started going over it with a, a little coat of liquid patina on the drawer and then using my brush to just kind of push that paper down into the liquid patina and just over and over again in small sections, uh, just being very careful and taking my time. I uh, did not want any wrinkles in the front of this and I certainly didn't want to tear my paper. Once I had it all down, I went ahead and went over the entire thing with a second coat of liquid patina just to make sure that this was very well protected and uh, very well adhered to the front of the drawer. Then it was on to doing the same process to the three front panels on this uh, buffet. I thought this would be a nice way to bring that paper down onto the body of the buffet. So I did the same process, just cut out my little strips just a little bigger than I needed them, started at the top with a little bit of the liquid patina, and then worked my way down to the bottom, just adding a little bit more of the patina to the door front, and then smoothing my paper down across it with my brush just again over and over being very slow and cautious so as not to rip the paper or have any wrinkles Once that was done and the paper was completely dry, I went in with some 220 grit sandpaper and very very carefully uh, just took my time again and sanded all of the edges of the paper and just, this is just to remove that little bit of excess um, paper from around the edge. Now the nice thing about this already being a distressed piece was that I could go down into the paint a little and it really didn't matter and the beautiful thing about using a lighter color like this is that I didn't have to worry about revealing a, a different color under from under the paper than I had on the rest of the piece. I just used all the same color and went over that with the decoupage paper, which was great. Once I finished sanding all the excess decoupage paper off, it was time to seal my paint. Now for this, I did go with wax and I started with clear wax by DIY and I'm using my soft bristle brush and I am just working that wax really well into the paint and then using my shop towel to wipe off any excess. I work in sections and when I'm done with a section with the clear wax, I went ahead and went over it with the dark wax. And as you can see here, my dark wax is pretty thin. That is because I use mineral spirits to kind of thin it out. So it goes on almost like a watercolor um, and doesn't have quite the muddy texture and it doesn't leave so many brown streaks in the, this uh, lighter colored paint. Once I got my section completely covered with the dark wax and I was happy with how it looked, I did go in and use a little bit more of the dark wax in certain areas to really kind of 
give low lights to some of the inlaid areas and some of the detail on this piece and just add a little bit more of a grunge factor to some of the detail and make it stand out just a tad bit more. I know it's hard to see here, but I am adding more of the dark wax just in that groove. And then, like I said, just very lightly wiping back a little bit of the excess, making sure that it looks exactly how I want it before I move on to the next section. I use the same technique on the drawer fronts and I also used it on the doors. I know you don't get to really see much of the doors in, during this whole entire process. They are sitting on the table in my kitchen and as I'm doing all of these steps to the drawers and the front of the piece, I am also going in and doing these same steps to the front of the doors for this cabinet. So you can see here again, I just went over it with one good even coat of the clear then wiped back the excess then over it with the thinned out dark wax just to give it a little bit of patina then wiped that off with my shop towel and then went in one more time with a little bit of the thicker dark wax to really highlight all of the edges and the grooves and the detail on these drawers once the waxing was done, it was time to put the piece back together again. I did spray paint the hardware with some Rust-Oleum uh, dark bronze spray paint before I added it back to the piece. And I am so happy with how this came out. I am not sure that adding it into the middle of uh, doing all of my Christmas switchover was the best idea, but I am really, really thankful that it's done.
did you guys think of my buffet transformation? I hope you liked it. I am thrilled with how it came out. I'm just over the moon with having it finished. I think it's beautiful. And now it's a nice um, addition to the front of the cottage when you walk in the door. Uh, I hope you enjoyed the shop tour too. And I hope you enjoyed the entire video. If you did, please remember to give it a thumbs up. I so appreciate that. And if you haven't already, I would love it if you would subscribe to my channel so you can follow along and then just hit the little notification bell so you don't miss anything. Drop me a comment below and let me know if you have any questions or what your favorite item that you saw in the shop tour was. Uh, I would love to hear from you guys. And a little reminder, any of the DIY products you saw me use today can be purchased on my website at www.theeclecticcottagespokane.com com it's listed below in the description box as well and for Tuesday <laughs> Tuesday's video will probably be a thrift haul I spent so much time I was here all day on my day off on Monday Tuesday Wednesday Thursday and I finished today getting all of my everything <laughs> switched around cleaned dusted all of that stuff you should have seen it in here you guys uh, you couldn't even walk around on the floor on Monday or Tuesday um, so I'm just grateful that it's all back in its place uh, the moral of that story is is that I have had no time for creating I'm really looking forward to actually getting back into my kitchen and um, starting to paint some things so uh, that will definitely be Friday's video next week but for Tuesday chances are it'll be a thrift haul uh, we are going on a junk run on Sunday so I will share that with you guys until then I hope you have a fantastic weekend and I hope you know how grateful I am that you're here thank you so much for being here I'll see you on Tuesday Bye. Thank you.